All right. Um, let me do a quick little project here. I got parts ordered. I got terrible computer problems. And um, that's why I haven't been putting any videos here lately. Um, got parts ordered and stuff. I'll go ahead and um, do a quick little radio um, while I'm waiting for the uh, computer parts to come in. Um, this is a beautiful little Philco. Look at the size of this thing. See, it's about the size of my hand. It, it's, it's difficult to find a small little table radio like this, wood. Um, there, there's plastic ones, but wood ones this small are pretty, pretty rare. So this is a pretty collectible little radio. I haven't looked at it yet. The cord is absolutely demolished. We'll just go ahead and um, get rid of that. All right, I save these. Crazy! I can sell these on eBay for a dollar a piece, and I, I just save all of them. And because the, this guy's on eBay and he wants all of them, he doesn't want the plug itself. He wants these two terminals. Uh, he makes these wood, uh, machined wood housings for them. Look beautiful, and out of you know, all kinds of really uh, unique wood that he finds, and he uses these terminals off of these to uh, to outfit the, his his homemade ones. And he gives me a dollar a piece for these. So I save all of them that I get there instead of throwing them out. Because, you, know, you know, you don't want something like that on any of your stuff. All right. But this cord is, like, demolished. Okay, get rid of it. Now, somebody's already pulled the screws out of it. I haven't even looked at this yet, so I have no idea. Ooh, look at that speaker. It's perfect. Okay. And the dial turns. Woo! This maybe hasn't been worked on. It's not been worked on. Okay, the cabinet is perfect. There's just a little scuffing on it. It, it won't have to be refinished. We'll just take it and um, do a little wipe down on it and put some uh, lacquer and, and stuff on it. It'll be perfect. Okay, so before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and um, uh, recap it. Okay, we got a resistor here, big power resistor. That's used in dropping the filament voltage. Alright, let's look at that first. If that's burnt out, that is a, a problem, because those things you can't find. Good? <laughs> it's good. Okay, uh, so we're going to go ahead and replace the capacitors. That is a given on all of these old radios. Just do it, get it over with. Alright, get this big fat thing out of here. Okay. Don't need that anymore. Get that out of here. Throw it away. Okay. Okay, we have both of them are high voltage, so we don't need to mess with them. We can cut that off. Okay, that is bad. Throw it away. Okay, these are the two positives, and that's the ground. We know that, so we don't have to mess with that. Okay, let's get this power cord out of here. All right, got a new cord here. I'm just going to stick that in there. Let me see. I want to, let's see. Six feet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. These are eight foot cords. That's too long. So we cut it off. Think one more time around and do it. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> okay, go like that. Okay, and we'll go around through here. Okay, that'll it. Okay, now, okay, that can't come out of there. Okay, now, one of them goes to the switch. Okay. Wow. Okay, we've got a 0.05 directly across the um, power cord. That's used to keep noise from getting into the uh, into the radio. 
through the cord. Okay. okay. This is a mess. Now, something to test, make sure the switch is good. Sometimes these switches go bad. Okay, that's good. And that should be off. Okay, the switch is good, so we can leave that in there. All right, let me test the, uh, I'm going to test the uh, variable resistor. I just got the ohmmeter sitting over there. We want to test this volume control and see that it looks good. Well, I'm going to use some spray. This is uh, called Brake Parts Cleaner. It's made by CRC. It's the one in the red can, non-flammable. Don't get the flammable one. You don't want to use fire stuff that can catch fire in your lab. Uh, use the non-flammable. It's a uh, Freon compound. Okay, that cleans these the, the wax and crud off of these controls and makes them nice and smooth. Okay. Oh, that's just beautiful. Okay. Now, okay, one went to here. Let's get that up. It doesn't really make any difference which one goes where. Um, if for safety reasons, you want to make sure the chassis is completely uh, uh, put it out of sight to where people can't touch it anyway. So you don't really care if the chassis is hot or not. Um, just, just do it in such a way that you always think the chassis is hot and that way you're not going to be caught by surprise. You, you're always going to think it's hot so you're not going to touch it and um, get shocked. So um, we're going we're gonna to do it right though. We're going to put the ground to the one that gets switched to the chassis and that way, if the house happens to be wired correctly, which most are nowadays, um, you'll be okay. You're not going to get a shock if you touch the chassis. Yeah. All right, that is an 05. I buy these things by the hundreds, so uh, we got plenty of them. Now, this capacitor here is the one that goes to ground. Let me see what it reads. Chassis to the line, about two megs. Okay. Two megs, you wouldn't get shocked. All right, that's a point one five. See if we read now. And nothing. It's up 20 megs or more. So this is the one that connects the uh, line to the chassis for bypass. 0.15 microfarads. It's a used one, so I'm going to have to put a little piece of wire on there. All right. Okay. Two down. One, two, three, four, five to go. Five to go. Okay, let's take care. This is the audio coupling capacitor. Okay, that goes from the wiper to the grid here.
looks like our dial cord's in pretty good shape. I, I'm not going to mess with the dial cord on it. If I was going to sell the radio, then I would put a new dial cord on it. Um, but this one's going in my collection, so uh, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to change the dial cord. If I'm going to sell it to somebody, it, I don't want the dial cord to burn uh, a break in the in the first couple of weeks that uh, they have it. Oh, good grief! Let that solder harden before you move it. Best way to get a cold solder joint is wiggle it while it's still uh, in that crusty. <laughs> they got that crusty. It just cracks and crumbles. Okay, there. Okay, we got one more down under here. The 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 weather's good outside right now. Uh, so my little supervisor is outside prowling. She might come in later. We'll see. But right now she's out prowling, so we won't have a kitty cat to come and visit us. Last couple of nights it's been down to freezing. It's going to get down to uh, in the 40s tonight. That's not too bad. But last night it got down to 33. Ah, it was cold. All right. Now, that gets all the capacitors in this area taken care of so we can put our firecracker in there. Okay, let me go get a firecracker. I've only got about three of these left. I got them somewhere a long time ago. And <laughs> they look like a big old firecracker. The, uh, they're old, so the tape on them is pretty much dried out. But I didn't have to pay a lot for them. That was the thing that made them so good. I, I think I paid uh, $5 for, for the whole bunch of them. I had, had eight or nine of them. I'm just going to pull this wire through. We'll hook the capacitor straight on to the two pin instead of splicing. And then the other one goes to here, and then ground goes over here, okay? But the way we got to get, we got one down underneath everything here, which is not fun. Grab it. Out it goes. So 05, okay? Now, that one goes a, a long distance. So I'm going to use um, one of these, okay? That's a 05. See, the little double-ended ones, or uh, single-ended ones like this, see, they don't have much, you, you can't get very much distance, but if you've got a couple, little place where they, where they go close, these are perfect. And these are cheaper. These here will cost you about 30 cents each, and these little cylindrical ones like this, come with the wires out the ends, these are almost double. They're, they're, they're over 50 cents each. So you pay more for the uh, cylindrical ones. But the cylindrical ones um, in these old radios, a lot of times, are not the right ones. You know, a lot of times the uh, the short ones work better. Back in the old days, they didn't have the uh, single-ended ones. They, in the old days, there weren't any per circuit board. The single-ended ones are made for going in a circuit board. And um, they're the most common and the cheapest. But back in the old days, when these radios were made, they didn't have those single-ended ones. They were all... Uh, it was tubular jobs. They were very, very uh, big 0.05 microfarads at 600 volts or 400 volts, whatever they were. Okay, we got another one right here. Ooh, ooh, okay. I'm going to check this transformer. This is um, something that goes bad a lot of times the audio output transformer. And we'll go ahead and measure that and see that it is good. And it is. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right, we got a um, condenser over here. Ah, 
Hello there, baby. Hey, we do have a kitty coming in here. Okay. Okay, that takes care of that. Then we got one here. Pull that off of there. I got a, this. This wiring in here is called peanut brittle. Um, it, it's got that brittle uh, rubber wire that's hardened up over time, and it just it crumbles. So I got to put some insulation. That's going to do it for the capacitors. I'm going to put this one here. Okay. That's one that could have been there, but it's okay. All right, now that goes on to there. God, I can't believe they use that big of a capacitor and they just really. Uh, all right. Okay, this thing should be hot by now, Dad. Damn it. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, let's go right in there. There we go. There we go. We get some heat now. Okay. Stick that down in there. Okay, we're done with this. Okay, that's the red one. Okay, and then the orange one goes to this one right here. God, look at that mess. What a mess. You're piled the solder up on some of these connections. Okay. And this one here, this look right on there. Okay, now. Um, that takes care of all the capacitors. Okay. Well, you gonna come over here? <laughs> Come here, baby. Yeah. Come here. Here. If you look up there, you can be in the picture, huh? You can be in the picture. She doesn't want to be in the picture. She's after Din Din, is what she wants. 
Now, don't step on the keyboard. You're going to you're you're going to send an email to somebody. The computer's running over here, and if she steps on that keyboard like she's done before, she's going to make it do something. You activated Skype, cat. Who are you going to talk to? Okay. <laughs> she stepped on the Skype Skype call key. Fortunately, it wasn't active. Okay. Now, uh, these are loctal tubes. And loctal tubes are not good tubes. They are a nuisance. I'm a, ooh, they look good, though. What happens is these pins, which are made out of uh, dumet, which is mostly iron, uh, they rust. And that makes the contacts really bad. Okay, I'm just going to take and pull each one out and put it back in. And that's going to going to clean those connections and make sure they're fresh. You know, wipe off the dirt off the tube. I'm not going to, I'm not doing a lot. Okay, this one looks good. Good. Looks good. Okay. If they have any rust on them at all, then um, they have to be scraped. But uh, if they don't have any rust, then you go. Now, these tubes the lettering on these tubes is water-based ink. Do not use a wet rag to wipe these tubes off, or the, the number will come right off of the tube and you won't have it on there anymore. So if you want to clean these tubes off, you've got to use uh, oh, some kind of a solvent that's not water-based. It has to be a polar solvent. What do we got here? Test it. See if that light bulb is good. And it is. Okay. Okay. Now, that gives a complete capacitor job on it. And um, cleans the uh, cleans the volume control. And um, let's see what happens. All right. Now, this does not have an antenna. We got a, a wire antenna, so I'm going to get me a... Here's our wire antenna. Clip that on there. Well, we're just going to trust the board, you know, and draft the best player. No, that's a big lie. You always draft... All right. That's it. Animals and famous fiction. That's How it. How are you doing, Jerry? Um, they're calling this this virus by faith. It's being it's right, away. It's right where it should be. It, the tuning is right where it should be. All right, that looks good. That's all it takes to get that radio going. What was that, about 20 minutes? Okay. We'll have more on the uh, cabinet tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll go out and um, we're going to take the cabinet and we're going to make it look pretty. We're just going to take it and wipe it down to, to get the, uh, you know, the, the sponge off of it. And then we'll take it and we'll put just a light coat of stain on it to go ahead and freshen it up. And then we'll lacquer it, and it's going to be beautiful. Just beautiful. A little, little bitty radio like this. I got some knobs in the knob box. We'll get some knobs for it. All this side here. And we'll put a back on it. We'll put it so that people can't touch the chassis and get shocked. Okay. Uh, we're going to take the box, and we're just going to touch it up, make it look beautiful. Now, we don't want to mess up our, our um, window. Uh, we need to uh, clean in here and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the window. To do that, we just pull these staples. It's put in with little staples. 
and we just take a pair of dikes and we'll pull the staples. Okay, now we'll just wash this. It's, it looks pretty good the way it is. Okay, now uh, we don't have to mess with the uh, dial. I mean, not the dial, but the um, grill cloth. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to wash this off with some solvent. Uh, it's, it's got no doubt years and years and years of grease and fingerprints on it. Let me get some solvent. <coughs> I use just plain lacquer thinner. You can use something like Restora Finish. Um, it, it's more expensive than lacquer thinner, but it works good. Okay, this is taking off the uh, little droplets of paint that somebody splashed on it and gets the dirt off of it. Okay, <clears throat> next thing we do, we're going to sand it to break the glaze. We're not taking the finish off, we're just taking the top, very, very top layer and roughening it up. That's all. This is not a full restore. We're just, just making it look good. If we're fully restoring it, we strip it down to nothing. But this one's got good enough finish on it to where we don't have to strip the original finish. We can leave it on there. The original finish is in good, good condition. It's crazed, got little cracks in it. So we sand it, and that gets those cracks out of it. Leaves it uh, nice and smooth. Okay, now that leaves the thing completely clean. We're, we're, we're absolutely clean down to bare uh, wood. This is a little bit rough yet. There, the, what happens to the old um, shellac uh, coating is it, it cracks. It leaves little fine cracks and that, that makes the surface look rough when we're done. So we want to just sand it just enough to break those cracks. You know, not enough to uh, take this finish off, but you know, the finish is thick. The finish on these things is very thick. It's, it's a 30 second of an inch thick. So that leaves a lot of uh, finish to work with. Okay. something loose. Got a place right here it's loose. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue that. All 
Ready? That looks good. All right. <clears throat> okay, we'll just let that go ahead and dry. Okay, this has been drying for a few hours. Okay. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to stain it. Uh, let's see. First thing we're going to do before we stain it, we're going to color those. All right, to color the black areas, we're just going to use marks a lot. Works good. We don't have to worry about it wiping off because we'll, we'll, we're going to coat the whole thing with a layer of um, uh, lacquer. That'll protect it. So we just need to color it. <laughs> you want to be in the movie? Hmm? You want to be in the movie? Come here. Come here, kitty. Here. You can be in the movie. Say hi to everybody. Look up in the camera and say hi. <laughs> yes. Oops. Side here. Okay, that looks great. Really good. All right, let me get some stain. Okay, for this one, we're just going to use one. It's called Special Walnut. It's a very light colored walnut that doesn't change the overall color of the uh, radio. It just goes ahead and intensifies what's already on there. Okay, I've just got a little piece of felt. And this is just cheap Minwax hardware store stain. Okay, and we just take that and go for it. Oh, that looks beautiful. That looks just gorgeous. All right, we're going to let that dry for a day or two. And then we'll lacquer it, okay?
All right, this turned out really nice. It's completely ready. Um, we've got some urethane um, uh, clear coat here. Okay. That's going to do it. Okay, we'll let that dry for a few hours and then we're going to be ready to put it back together. Okay, look at that box. That turned out gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. All right, now I need to get the little plastic window and we're going to stick it back in there. All right, now we have to take and stick this back in. That goes right like that. Okay, I'm going to stick a little bit of stuff. Okay. These go up. There. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Now get this thing out of here before I melt something. Okay. Next, we need to um, get the radio itself. <clears throat> now we've got to have screws that are going to go up into these holes. Okay, those are going to be <coughs> the old radio self-tapping screws. I got a few of them, huh? <laughs> it's over 10 pounds. Anyway, let's see. Okay, we need four. Okay. Looks good. Okay, now that moves. Okay. Okay. Got two knobs. <coughs> Isn't that beautiful? That is just gorgeous. Okay, now in the back we need to have a piece of cardboard that's going to go across the back here. Okay, because we don't want to have to where somebody can come when it's plugged in and turned on and touch the chassis, which could have um, a little bit of voltage on it. Okay, let's make a back. Okay, to make that, I've got this medium cardboard here. It's just a, a fiberboard that's about, um, oh, about two millimeters thick. Okay, we'll measure. Okay, we've got to have a piece. Okay, eight inches by five and a quarter. Eight inches by five and a quarter. 
Okay, here we have our piece of cardboard. Now, I got to have a hole for the line cord. Okay, that's going to be here. It's going to be up. Wow. Pretty close. That's good enough. Okay. Now I've got to guess where the screw holes are. There are little screw holes in the corners here. <clears throat> okay, now that should work. One. All right, one more, and we got the thing done. Too big. Okay, that's it. Okay. All right, plug it in. Turn it on. Look at how pretty that is. Look at that little radio. Oh, that is that is just a that is nice little radio. Okay, that's it. One gorgeous little radio. Okay, that'll go on the uh, shelf somewhere and be part of my collection. Okay, total restoration time, you know, about an hour, hour and a half. You know, if you subtract out the time we were waiting for paint to dry and stuff, that's it.